Welcome. Thank you. So the theme of this talk is to be in relationship with. And I listened to a podcast with Luis Mojica. Um, it's called Life, Holistic Life Navigation. And they were talking about decolonization. And uh, for us living in this part of the world, we don't think so much about colonization as you might do in other parts of the world. But if colonization would be to dominate or to see things, people, others as functions that service us, then to decolonize would be to be in a relationship with. So what I want to bring us to here is to realize that we live in a world where people and nature should serve a function to who we are as opposed to being in relationship with everything. And in indigenous cultures, this is very the natural base of how you live. Also, we were colonized here, because Christianity and industrialism came also here. So we also lived in relationship with. And why I'm bringing this up to start with is because we also see our body as a thing, that should work for us. And when it doesn't, we get angry at it. And how do you think your body reacts when you get angry at it? Can I have some replies to that question? It tightens. It tightens. I heard something else. Numbs. It numbs. It shuts down. It shuts down. Breaks. Yes, it breaks. Creates stress. Creates stress. Yeah. So, if we instead are in relationship with our body, we're asking it for what it needs, why it's in pain, how I can listen to it. And the first person who told me this was at a burn, an Af at Africa burn in South Africa. He was a medical doctor for 30 years. But he felt frustrated because he didn't really feel that when people left, they felt healed. They didn't leave with a sensation of being healed. So he left being a medical doctor and he became a healing masseur and a professional dom. <laughs> and when he gave a session, he said, finally, people went out and they were like, oh, I'm healed. <laughs> And he gave me a massage session because at the time I had a lot of problems with my hips because I had danced so much, but I had danced a lot on stage, which was a lot about using my body to look good while I dance, which means you don't listen to the body because you're using the body as a function for something as opposed to moving as the body wants. So he was giving me a massage and I said, but I don't have someone like you at home. When I don't have you, what should I do? And he said, the medical doctor, 30 years of experience, he said, speak to your body. Ask it how it feels. I was like, what? What? <laughs> so, take a moment right now and um, think of a place in your body that right now has some kind of tension or some pain. Who doesn't have that in the room? Raise your hand. Who doesn't have any place in the whole body where there's tension or pain? One. <laughs> so the rest of you, choose one place. And then put a hand on that place. And then you take a breath. And you say, hello. I'm here for you. I want to listen to you. Ah, you want to work less? Ah, interesting. You want to dance? Huh? Okay. You're telling me that I didn't rest enough. Ah, you didn't allow me to cry when I needed to. Hmm. 
and then see if there is a place in your body that feels good. <coughs> Do you have any place in your body that feels neutral or good? It's kind of, it can be like, I feel my, my toes when I do like this, it feels kind of nice. What parts of your body do you have that feels good? Tell me. Heart. The heart? Hips. The hips? Thighs. The thighs? The hands. The hands? The stomach and the groin. The stomach yeah, and the groin. So so we're talking about, we are in pleasure here, yes. My pussy actually feels really nice. <laughs> and now you put the hand on that place. And you say, hello. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for feeling, for making me feel this. And then when you hold on this place that might feel good, think of the spring. We are passing through spring into early summer. So can I hear some in Sweden where this is an explosion. We're kind of inside the whole winter. It's cold. We stop to look at people and then everything expands at the same time. So it's kind of falling in love with spring, right? So, what do you like about spring and early summer? Give me some things. New life. New life. Flowers. 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 Scents. Scents. Freshness. Freshness. The smells. The smells. The greenery. Light. The light. The heat. The heat. Green. Growing. Hmm? Greenery. Greenery. Colors. Growing. Colors. Growing. Birds singing. Birds singing. Skirts. Skirts. <laughs> yes. I like uh, flair de bloom, uh, elderberry. Oh, it hasn't come yet, but it's like coming tomorrow maybe. Surian. <laughs> uh, oh, so nice. Lilacs. Huh? In English. Lilacs. 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 Okay. So let's all take a breath in and breathe in spring into that place where you feel good. How does that feel? Mm. Warm. Wow. Warm. Open. Open. Lightness. Lightness. Vibrating. Vibrating. Happiness. Happiness. Hmm. Mm. So did you notice that we can also have pain or tension somewhere and feel pleasure and feel light and happy at the same time? And when I lived in, in Mozambique, I had a, well, I still have, like a bonus papa, Papa Juma. And he was my dance student, but he was like 60 years old. And he would bike from really far away and like super fit and always come with his like, biggest smile. And he would be like the one helping and smiling and always, you know, giving that good energy. And one night when we had a dance event, he came. Smiling, but you could still you could sense a heaviness in his body, and and I came up to him and gave me a hug and I said, "Say how, how are you?" And he said, "Lisa, I have to tell you, um, I lost my niece and her sister and her friend in a car crash today." And I get like, "You are here, like I'm, I'm so sorry." And he's like, "It's better that I'm here." so that I can remember that there's joy mm -hmm. and dance with you guys. Mm -hmm. And this is not like shutting out the pain. This is being with the pain and the pleasure at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that leads us into what for me is the biggest insight that I had when it comes to pleasure, that it comes from me in my body, as opposed to we are walking around waiting for the spring to give us pleasure, or to the perfect lover to give us pleasure. The first time I had mind-blowing sex, when I had like lots of orgasm and opened up, 
I was like, I met a guru, I met like this person who is a magician. I didn't think, wow, I have an amazing body. <laughs> hmm? And afterwards, I was, when I saw him six months later, I couldn't even look at him. Because I was like, I had made him into some kind of superstar god picture image. And I could never feel that again. But then, in a workshop with Yeni Rebinder, a teacher of mine, we did this um, yoni healing where we imagine our pussy or yoni being a temple. And you, had, you couldn't have any people inside it. You could only have things that we enjoy and desire and like. So we did this meditation and I could suddenly feel my whole pleasure system coming alive. And then all the tears came because I realized that there wasn't a guru, magical person. They had just shown something in my body that is mine. And I couldn't experience it again and again and again if I just meet the right people who listen that I can communicate to. So how many people have had a lover in a beautiful setting and then it like the bubble crashes and then you're like, I will never feel that again. <laughs> Who has felt that? More than half of the room. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. You're going to feel it again. Because it's your body's capacity to feel it again. Just like we can feel the pleasure of spring again. But if we are depressed during spring, we're not going to feel the pleasure in spring. Because we're going to forget to listen to the birds. And we're going to listen, we're going to forget to smell the flowers. So, can we take a breath in again and remember that spring, yeah. And also, ask your body, how does it want to sit right now? Do you need to wiggle somewhere? Do you need to like, ah, hello body, I'm sitting still. Um, how do you want to be right now so that I can feel more comfortable? And then we can unite around things that are beautiful. That's why we feel so connected when we go to a concert or when we go to a beautiful scenery. And now the beautiful scenery is the people around you. So why don't you like smell in spring, see the flowers, and then you see that beauty in everyone in this room. Just like start to look around and like wave a little bit to people. Even behind you, turn around. See who's here? They're not so scary. <laughs> Everyone here has something that is very beautiful, and if you look at them, you can see that thing. Can you see something beautiful in everyone you're looking at? <sighs> and then when we feel here, in this space, it means we are connecting with the people who are here. We also feel the chair we're sitting on. We can also look around in the space. It's a natural reflex when we come into a space, like, am I safe? We do, we do this in somatic experiencing, in somatic therapy. So you just look around and see that, yeah, we're telling the nervous system, like, yeah, it's safe here, it's actually even beautiful. Look, for example, here. Allow the moment to unfold. These words came to me in a dream. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, maybe I should write it down. And they're like, no, I'll remember. And they're like, no. And I got out of bed and I wrote it on a piece of paper. And I fell asleep. I woke up in the morning and I was like, I have no idea what those words are. <laughs> mm. So then, um, and that was in a period that I was doing a lot of healing and Practicing being in the unknown, not being in control, because that's when we can feel pleasure. If I need to know everything, every second, how everything's going to work out, it becomes kind of stiff. Yeah? So um, if you think of everything you have to do before you go on summer holiday right now, how does that change your body? Start to think of everything you have to do at home. Start to think all the work things, all the people that you should be helping. Um, all, the thing, all the people that need your help, your car needs to be fixed. What's happening with you right now? 
Tightness. Tightness. Contraction. Contraction. Yes, the shoulders. The shoulders come up. Yes. Okay, so it doesn't help us. It helps us to take maybe that moment to do our strategic plan to make sure we do most important things, but then we also need to. Let's bring all up the shoulders. Let's bring them up. And then we bring them down. <laughs> Allow the moment to unfold. I don't know how the end of this talk, I didn't know exactly what exercises that I was going to do. I called my father before I came today. My father is Hans Josefsson, he's an opera singer, entertainer, musical artist. And, I sa and he said, say hello from me. <laughs> he had stuff from me. <laughs> and I said, well you will be there. Because it's an opera singer that taught me to, you know, stand here. So he's with me. Every time I stand in front of people. And I told him, let's do a workshop together and it should be called Facilitate Like an Opera Singer. <laughs> so we're going to bring him here. Who would like to go on Facilitate Like an Opera Singer? <laughs> yes. It's going to happen. <laughs> um, so, the other theme that you might have uh, seen popping up in relationship to this event and what I've been writing about is a lot about the Swedish word Ferelskelse, which you could call falling in love or enchantment. I think Ferelskelse, the Swedish word, is really nice because it's like, uh, how would you translate? It's like being love in a way, right? Falling in love is like you're losing yourself. Yeah? And enchantment is, is a little bit of like, wow, like looking as if frozen or something. <laughs> but I think um, the sensation of ferelskelse, it's a really particular sensation in the body. So think of the last time you uh, had a crush or felt in love or ferelskelse. Infatuated, I think. Yeah. Say again? Infatuated. 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 I'm learning every day. Infatuated. Infatuated. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Infatuated. <laughs> ah, so, what happens when you remember that? Butterflies. Mm, butterflies. I'm getting warm. I hope I have to take this out. Ungrounding, like the energy comes yeah, up. Yeah, energy goes up. Woo! What else? Uplifted. Uplifted. Energetic. Energetic. <coughs> Do you like that sensation? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Would you like to be it in more often? Yeah. Yeah? So what if we could take <coughs> the infatuated, <laughs> the falling in love energy here. When we feel this, we very often connected to attraction or sexual desire. So first I feel the love feeling, which means that it must mean that I want something sexual. And then we look at the person from those glasses. And then when we look at those glasses, we also start to look in the romantic dream we have, which is partner, kids, long life, uh, or maybe it's like someone that I will travel with, or someone, you know, we start to plan things with them. So here is Ferelskelse. You feel it? Yeah? Okay, now feel the sexual desire attraction. How does that feel? Then it's like when you really want someone, and you're like, oh, how does that feel? Like lower down. It's lower energy, down. Like fiery. Fiery. Like, oh, yeah. Can anyone else feel it? Yeah. Yeah. What? I need some more words. Wild. Raw. Wild. 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 Urge. Where in the body do you feel the wildness? Here. Here. Like the urge. Up. Urge. Yes, it's an urgency. I need it now. Like unsettling. Unsettling. Yeah. Hmm. Like. Um, I don't know, loss of control maybe, but just like um, you get sort of uh, knocked off your... Your center. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hands on. Mm. And I realized that 
realized I need to make slides. <laughs> I would make it. So you remember the first can see here? Okay, you see it. And we have the 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 sexual attraction here. What if we could also separate the sexual attraction into the sensation and the needing something, the desire of having it, as two different ones? Can you see that? So I really need you and I want this and I want you now is one thing. And that, wow, mm, yeah, that's another thing. Can you see that? Yeah. So if we take away the, that one, can you be in just the, ah, oh, it's just, this is your pleasure. It has nothing to do with whoever is coming in. This is just my capacity to feel it. I hear some yes. Can I hear it? What do you feel yes. like? Mm -hmm. Power. Power. It's like being uh, sexually autonomous. Being sexually autonomous. <laughs> That's what we're getting to work. Yeah. I can own it. It's mine. And the party pooper in me is going to tell you that there's a desire, the wanting, the needing, is actually something from an attachment when we we have a need that is not fulfilled so then we need it we need it from someone if we are in our adult present being then i'm like okay i have this need how can i fulfill it can i have it from you oh you don't want me that's okay i'll get it from somewhere else it's a child that is like i need it from you right now yeah you can even try that. Try this one. It's quite painful. You feel it? Please. Please don't take me. Do you feel the discomfort? Yes. Okay, shake it out. So we want so you see we started with Ferezkelse, which is just one thing, but automatically these things come in and we think they're all one, but they're not. Okay, so, so now we separated it, we, we decoupled, what else gets said, the falling in love, the, I forgot the word. Um, infatuation. Infatuation. Okay, so now we're going to the romantic part. So you fall in love with someone, and then you start the romantic dream of wanting to create something with that person. How does that feel? Exciting. Exciting. Brings it more into like now, more presence. When you when you dream about getting married and having kids with oh, this no, person. Oh no, sorry. I thought you meant. I thought you said when you let go. Of this. Ah, when you let go of it. Now I want to feel that thing of 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 desiring a certain mm. hopefulness. Hopefulness. Beautiful. Beautiful. Connection. Connection. Anticipation. Anticipation. Hope. Striving. Striving, yeah. Mm. Obsession. Obsession. Mm -hmm. Well, the obsession here, it's like, it's, it's connected to that one we were just visiting, that, that one. So they're also in a circle here. It can also contain pain. Say again? It can also contain pain. It can also contain pain, exactly. So those are the unmet needs and the longing for someone else or for something to fulfill who we are. And they pop up in different places here. But if we just keep the... the my, my, I started to kind of reject my inner... I call her Jasmine. Jasmine is like waiting for Aladdin to come on the carpet, you know, and take her on a crazy adventures. And I feel like I'm 19 and I'm like, just take me away. <laughs> And my, my, uh, my, um, my therapist, she said, don't judge her, you should love her. She's the one telling you what you really desire. Mm -hmm. But don't put it on a specific person if they're not willing to give you that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that my desire to build a house or to have a partner that I want to travel with or maybe have kids is a, is a great desire. But I can't have it and like having it like a little hat and then I meet someone. <laughs> <laughs> And then I get really disappointed when they're not living up to my expectation. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, check it out again. 
I'm getting somewhere with all of this, okay? Because the goal is that you should be able to be in the sensation of falling in love without having to couple in these other things. So how would it be if you met a person? Can I meet you? Yeah. And I'm actually choosing this person here because uh, I did fall in love with, with him when we met. <laughs> so, how can I meet someone and just sense this sensation of like, it's like pirit, the butterflies, and see it as something that comes, that shows that there's something exciting to learn if you spend time with this person. Maybe it's because you have something in common. You both just started horse riding, and you meet someone else who started horse riding, and you want to talk about this path that you can, like, you know, gallop on. And then the romantic dream comes in here, and it's like, this must be my dream partner. So then we're like, no, we're just sharing something right here. Where they're giving us something that we've been longing for, and they can give it to us that moment when we are right here. But if we think that this is only for partnership or for sexual interaction, we're missing out on so many great connections. So what I felt when I was living in Mozambique, it was that people would greet me with a sensation of infatuation. Huh? Am I getting it right? Yeah. And it's this, this idea of like, hi, I see you, and I'm here with you. Can you do you want to come here? So, when, and then when people greet each other, it's really common that you're like, oh, and then you just stand here, you can even relax with the hand. And then you just hang out. And then it's like, how is your father? How is your mother? Yeah. And you just kind of shoot it. <sighs> How does that feel? Mm, it's nice, very relaxing, very yeah. chill. Mm. So it's like being in 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 the state, in like in the falling in love without having to like, when are we going to have sex? When do I? I'm just being, mm. and it's like ah. Oh. Mm. Oh, thank you. Just to see where we are in time. Okay. So, I have been working with uh, pleasure and sexuality dance for many, many years. And when I got into Tantra or um, conscious sexuality and these spaces of, or unconditional love, I was like, ah, that's what I've been doing through dancing my whole life. Exactly. Because when you meet on the dance floor, you're not searching for like the peak moment, the orgasm. And you're also, if you're dancing with someone, you're not like getting that like, oh, I need you. You're like, wow, we're having such a great time. And then I would get crushes on people I danced with, and then we would take it outside the dance floor. It didn't work at all. <laughs> and I met so many dancers who said like, no, dancing is so much better than sex. And I, real, and I was agreeing on that, but I realized later it's because they could stay present when they danced, but not when they moved into intimacy. So that's why dancing has been my most important tool to teach people, to teach myself to be. So when I feel that passion or feeling in love, then like, how can I enjoy that feeling? And how can I bring it even into my cleaning? <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> and it also brings us into rhythm. And you can add something. Let's not look around at each other in the room.
Christian traditions, we also did these kind of things. In the times of spring, we would call for Freya. She has a staff. She's a pleasure goddess, but she's also wild. And when I think of her, then maybe I can feel how did my ancestors a thousand years ago connect the pleasure. about what a certain people know or what education they have. It's like I meet them and I sense through them that they have something that I need. They have been to a certain place in themselves that is for me still a little bit like, whoa! Like Papa Juma, who could go out dancing after he lost his niece. So when I'm close to him, he's expanding my capacity to be in pleasure and in pain. So those are the people that I've been seeking. And in a way, that's also, every time, it's a, it's a frelskelse. I'm falling in love because it's like, wow, I just want to be close to this person. It doesn't mean I'm going to have sex with them. Or have expectations of what they're going to give me. But I want to open up to what they can give to me, and what I can learn, and what maybe I can give to them too. And the Leicester teacher that I followed, her name is Efu, and um, she's from Tanzania and lives in Brazil. And uh, she teaches somatic experiencing in family constellations. And two modalities that are very close to my heart, and I'm doing somatic experiencing, but also a lot of family constellations is kind of in my system, how I relate to my family and ancestors. And I felt like, okay, I've lived in Mozambique, I have Tanzanian teachers, very similar cultures, a lot of my teachings come from that region. And she's doing the Western modality of, of somatic therapy that I'm doing. And she lives in Brazil, where I've also lived. And there was just so many things that connected, I was like, who is this person? I need to see her. So I went to um, Brazil to teach at the Sexibility Festival. Uh, this year, which is a Swedish festival that we for the first time took to Brazil. So I contacted EFU, which I had only seen like teaching together with Peter Levine, who founded Somatic Experiencing, and on YouTube clips and podcasts, and she's teaching all over the world. And I just wrote her an email, I said, Hi, I'm a pleasure and intimacy coach, and I work with Somatic, and I study Somatic, and work with Somatic Experiencing, and I would love to come to your healing center. And she just wrote me back, it's like, yeah, 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 I can help you, and you can maybe stay here, we have lots of treatments, um, and uh, we can do sessions and everything, so no problem, you are very welcome. And um, 
I got to her healing center after I spent a week and a half in Rio de Janeiro where I thought I was going to only go and have fun, but it was more like going into my, ni my 19 year old who wanted to do everything every day and got a bit exhausted and felt a bit sad because I was traveling alone and I was exhausted and I was like, I'm so glad that the adult Lee booked me five days at the healing center. <laughs> So I had an inflammation in my shoulder, I was a bit tired, I was tired, and I got to, um, got to her place. And it's just this lovely African mother energy, um, which is, you just feel that everything, like, kabi, uh, that's a Portuguese word, fits inside. Everybody fits inside this big heart, and I have met so many, I have many mothers like that in Mozambique, it's just uh, like this, can you feel it when I'm standing here? Yeah, yeah? it's like, uh, you are all my children, you know? mm. it's so much love. And we were doing a session, and I sat in front of her and I'm like, oh, I feel like I receive so much like motherly love and I'm really able to relax just sitting in front. And then she said, and now, imagine I'm your own mom. And automatically there was something in me that went like... She's like, you see, you have to look at your own mom the same way, because this love is also in her. Mm -hmm. So I sat there, and to make a long story short, she said, if you can't receive that love from your mother, you won't be able to receive it in your relationships either. And it doesn't mean we all have mothers who uh, have problems and things, and, but in every mother there is a part that loves our child. Even if we adopted a child, even if we had, um, you know, um, drug problems, we always love. Mm. So I want you to invite to receive that mother love. And then if you want to bring in your own mom, or if you want to bring in, I bring in the Afro-Brazilian gods, Mama Yushun, Imaja, the goddesses of the water, they're also mothers. Mm -hmm. mm. We are held. And from here, I felt this unconditional love that I can just receive and give. So here I am a sex therapist traveling from Sweden to the other side of the world to meet this Tanzanian teacher to teach me about unconditional love. And the last day I asked her, but I understand you don't, you're not married or you don't have kids. And she said, no, I'm a nun. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't have anything but laugh. <laughs> Because uh, in my, you know, journey for uh, pleasure, uh, I needed uh, to find a nun, and I'm going to read. <laughs> um, so when you become a nun, you do the chastity vow, which means that you can't have sex with other people. And it says that it frees you from the demands of an exclusive human relationship so that you can give all your love to God. And she said, I translated that into giving unconditional love to all people. <laughs> She's the perfect poly person. <laughs> Just without any relation, sexual relationships. <sighs> so, I think this is towards here, I want to end this little session of I want to invite you to be in love in Ferelskelse So have a look around again to the people around you Can you just like be a little bit in Ferelskelse with all of them? And I know in many people this might bring up a lot of um, other emotions that we have coupled with our capacity to feel in love. So there might come up sadness or fear, and it's a whole other talk to bring that up. 
but it's also uncoupling. It's also one experience in life that got stuck with another one. So we can actually learn how to separate them. I can be sad because I lost my partner, but I can still feel the capacity of being verelskad or falling in love. Or um, I lost my, 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 my sister, for example, and I feel the pain when I think of a certain playing out in nature because we used to do that. But it's, they're couples, so we can practice. I don't have to stop feeling that good thing just because something else that happened that one, by one time in life comes and gets stuck. So we can practice. Yeah. Hmm. Let's take a breath in. Bring up the shoulders. <coughs> and shake it up. <sighs> and you're going to be invited to feel love and pleasure coming out right here. But I want to thank you first for being here and you sat here almost an hour and you're still present with me. Thank you. Thank you.